Everyone, please put together all your likes, heart emojis for Cole Michelson himself, Nathaniel Bolzelich. Hello. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Hello, everybody. I uh, hope everyone's doing well around the world. Thank you for joining us. Happy to have you here. Okay, yeah. let's bring out our next guest. Next up, we have Werewolf Oliver Chase Coleman. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, guys. What's up? What's up? Good to see everybody. Well, even though I can't see you. But I can see you guys. Hey, guys. Hey. Oh, what's up? Hey, hey. Okay, and last but not least, Declan is here. Torrance Combs. Hey, everybody. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your applause, please, please, please. No, <laughs> please. It's too much. Too much, guys. Screaming girls. I can hear them, hear them from Sydney. <clears throat> hear them through the screen. Well, thanks so much for being here today, guys. We have had, um, I think, I've done several of these panels, and I truly think this is the one I've received the most questions for from fans. So we want to make sure we get to all those fan questions. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, first up is, how is your quarantine going? Everyone has asked that from all of the different platforms. Have you guys picked up any new hobbies? Um, are you kind of doing any new, binging any new shows? What's everyone been up, up to? I'll go first. Um, yeah. I've been surfing a lot uh, because I'm still in lockdown in Sydney, Australia. I think we did this like almost 12 months ago, this last, uh, the last time we did a, a Wizard World. And um, yeah, I've been in Australia the whole time unexpectedly. So I started surfing again and I've been boxing a lot. I've just been working out a ton, actually, to be honest. That's all I really do is work out. And oh, I did a no sugar. I haven't eaten sugar for 16 weeks. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah. Don't, well, that's, that's it. <laughs> Health goals 2021, right? Right. You're already crushing them. <laughs> mm. Chase, what about you? Jeez, man. It's actually, I was saying earlier, it's been a pretty productive year. I worked on a couple of films this year. I just, we actually have to finish one more day on this horror film called Boogeyman that I've almost finished with. Very excited about that. I released my first music video. Uh, check it out, Lost in You. Check it out on YouTube, Mercy Mode, Lost in You, for those who haven't seen it. Uh, just released that. Uh, I uh, just finished another awesome single. I've been doing a lot of concerts virtually. Um, been gaming a little bit. That's been a lot of fun. I mean, been gaming a lot more than a little bit. I don't know. I haven't gotten to surf as much. I'm listening to Nathaniel right now. I really want to go surfing again. He makes me envious of that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been uh, been crazy. It'd, been inside. It'd be pretty cold. It'd be good. pretty cold in California. Your I got, I got wetsuits, there. man. I got wetsuits. Get the thick ones. Yeah, I got a what's a four three. Anyways. You have to wear a hat. You have to wear one of those wetsuits. Just not that cold. cold. <laughs> you have to wear a hat. Come on. <laughs> no right. Kickboxing <laughs> too. Yeah, definitely. Torrance, what about you, man? How has yours been? Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, like. Uh, I sort of, it's the, the, minds, uh, the mindset shift from uh, waiting it out to, well, this is just life now, so I've got to live it. Um, and it took me maybe embarrassingly long to get there. Um, just like, uh, not that I believed it was going to be over anytime soon, but there is a mindset difference between this is a temporary setback and I'm just going to like hunker down versus like, okay, I need to be a person in this world. So what does that look like? Uh, so uh, I recently started my own Twitch stream. Um, which I've been doing, which may not sound like much, but it turns uh, hours of unproductive gaming into hours of um, socialization. And uh, I think right now we're all kind of looking to connect to people. So it's been a, a nice source of connection for me to connect to some people outside my world. And um, so yeah, that's been a lot of fun. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's been pretty good. I've, I've, I go for walks. Uh, I got my cats. Life is good. You're both cat people, aren't you? Seems that way. Yeah, look you at this, cat. Cat, this cat right here. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is this is an awesome cat. Oh, that's yeah. That Chase, that's a dog. Mm -hmm. Chase, that's a dog. Wait, is it? It's a dog. Oh. Nobody tell, oh. him. That's right. tell him. You can tell. Yeah. What's he or she's name? This is Chai, but she's also huh? called Worm. You know why she's called Worm? <laughs> tell you us. Know why? Whenever she gets really, really, really excited to see you, when you come inside, she, she, she wags her tail like this and she wiggles like a worm and it's really, really, really cute. Oh, it all makes sense now. Yeah. Worm. worm. So you've got a cat and have you got a, you've got a cat and a dog, Chase? Well, there's two cats. The dog is actually Taylor's that she brought. And now okay. the dog is, I love the dog now too. And the dog loves me. Oh, so, so you're the, you're the cat lady and your girlfriend's yeah. the dog. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I got it. 
I'm that, clear. I got the it. dog man. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what the logical conclusion to that sentence? Yeah. All right. So let's get one of the questions. Hit yeah, me with some questions. The questions. Yeah. Okay, guys. All right. Um, Chisi, I'm apologies if I didn't say your name right on Facebook, has a question for Nathaniel. Mm-hmm. Did you want Cole to end up becoming good or stay the bad boy he was when we first met him? I actually, as an actor, I enjoyed playing the bad character more. Um, but I think um, Daniel Campbell was grateful that I became good, you know, because that way she got to obviously got to kiss me and stuff. <laughs> that, that's what Daniel. That's what Daniel told me. I didn't make this up. That's I said. Look, that's very. I would have preferred to play the bad character, but um, but I think people like to see the nice. There's you know it's two sides. You know, every every person has two sides to you know themselves. I guess you know. So she brought out the best, but mm. but I prefer to play bad. I'd rather like you know beat Damon in the face with a bat as opposed to making out with hot chicks on uh, on, on the originals. Right. But that's just me. That's just me. Mm-hmm. You had a good growth arc, though. It was good. It made sense. Yeah, there was an arc. Yeah, yeah. And then it just, yeah. I wonder what happened to Cole now. You know, that's, that's my question. Oh, he's living in Australia surfing. That's what he's doing. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Well, that kind of leads into one of our other fan questions. Um, it was from Amanda on Facebook. Would you ever consider guest starring in legacies like Cole and Davina visiting Hope, helping solve you know, some, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to do it. I don't think it'll happen, but I'd be happy to do it if they, um, if they reached out, but um, I don't think, I don't think that was really the goal of legacies. I don't know how, I, th- I know that, I think, um, I know that Riley's made an appearance, but who, does anyone else know who else has actually been on the originals from, or sorry, on legacies from the original cast? Um, they've hinted at a I don't lot. Remember. <clears throat> I haven't seen anybody in a long time, so people don't talk to each other as much as we used to. You know, so. Yeah. You know what's a crazy phenomenon? Because of lockdowns, like, so I used to come back to Australia every year for Christmas and, and for New Year's to visit my mum, and I would rarely get recognised. Like, maybe, like, once every so often I get recognised in Australia. Because of the lockdown, because everybody's re-watching Vampire Diaries and the originals, everywhere yeah. I go now in Australia, I'm getting recognized, like consistently and constantly, you know. So Great. it's kind of been interesting. There's, like, there's a whole new group of fans that are sort of sort of revisiting yeah. Vampire Diaries and originals and they're like, and they'll recognize you in the straight, like I'll have a mask on, I'll have a hat on, so you can literally just see this. And people are like, Carl Michelson, you're like, <laughs> Really? how i must have very distinct eyebrows well i mean it's like you're, if we're binging you know they're watching your face mm. for like 10 hours a day 10 yeah. hours a day so they're just re- they're primed for it they're just like I, wait everybody looks like cole michelson to them at a certain point they're like i think the delivery driver from pizza hut was cole michelson <laughs> i don't know that's that that's wasn't that, that, that wasn't a paid post thanks pizza hut thank you yep that's fine sorry Okay, we have another. Oh, this is so awkward because I can't hear anyone laughing. <laughs> <laughs> they are laughing. We have lots of hearts and lots of thumbs up emojis. I don't see these. I don't see these. So it's making me upset. They're it's like all, all the cloud stuff, all the all the platform stuff. Okay. Okay. This next question is for everyone. Um, this is not TBDU related. Um, but do any of you? This is Joanna on Facebook. Do any of you sleep with a stuffed animal? And if so, what kind? Uh, technically, I do. I'll, I'll, I'll cop to it, but um, not in the way you may think. So when I first uh, got my cats, they um, there's this uh, product called a Snuggle Kitty. And what it is, is it's a stuffed animal with a little like rumbly heartbeat battery pack inside. It turns out they don't care about the battery pack, but uh, the one cat just took to it and he suckles it like it's his mom. And he's eight oh. years old now, and it's still the only way to get him to calm the F down when it's time to sleep. So it's like crusty and falling apart and just like, it's the, but if I ever washed it, I tried, I bought a brand new one and I like replaced it and he just wouldn't touch it. He knows the OG. So I have a, a, a disgusting, crusty little cat stuffed animal that lays at the foot of my bed so that my cat doesn't attack me in my sleep. So I sleep with a stuffed animal. Okay, there you go. Man, you know, I don't really... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, there, was a, there, was a, there was a follow-up question. You're, are you single still? Uh, I, I am not single at the moment. <laughs> you found someone that fell in love with the crusty thing as well? That's right. And, and in wow. fact, insists upon its presence so that she can sleep as well. It's a, it's a good test. <laughs> if they really love you, they'll stay even with the crusty, like... As crusty as I am, somehow she loves me. 
That's amazing. That's well, <laughs> I I don't I don't have a anything that I like that I sleep next to. Um, so I don't have any stuffed toys or crusty things. That's well, how do you know answer. if somebody truly loves you if you don't have a crusty stuffed animal that they have to put up with? Nobody loves me. No, you can't love Carl Michelson. You, Not you should true. know that. No, I uh, to, for me for my answer, I sleep in a king size bed, and I do not have enough room for any more things in my bed because I have Taylor, and then I have this dog, and then two other cats. Those are all the fuzzy creatures around me at night. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know. Maybe no stuffed ones. They're alive, little little furry creatures that I get to cuddle with, like this one. And she runs hot at night. She'll get she'll warm you up. So that counts. I think that counts. I have two toddlers, so we have like action figures and all sorts of stuff in our bed. So I get it, guys. There you go. You know. <laughs> Is that what the hammer's for behind you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they get out of line. No. <laughs> Your Donatello's really cuddly at night. <laughs> Well, we're at Michelangelo house. My uh, uh-huh. the Michelangelo's the the turtle. That's the one. Cowabunga! Yeah. Right. I love the Ninja Turtle stuff. That's cool. Okay, guys, we have um, Katie on Facebook has a question for everyone. Is there a storyline you wish the writers would have expanded upon more? <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'll go. Uh, sure. Um, m- when I started in on the fifth season, they didn't quite know what my involvement would be. Uh, and I, I, I heard tell afterward of various ideas of storylines, whether I was going to be a vampire or whatever else and then what my level of involvement would be in the story. So I kind of would have loved to just see what else was out there. What was the alternative? Um, and uh, it would have been fun to play a vampire or something more supernatural. But uh, no regrets, but uh, I'd, I'd be curious to see the alternate timeline. Mm-hmm. You know, of the three of us, I think probably Nathaniel, I'm not going to speak for Nathaniel, but Nathaniel might have been able to experience this the most of the three of us because Nathaniel, you started quite early on the Vampire Diaries and then you got to branch out many years. You stopped for a while and you came back, right? Yeah. Mine we- was a quick, it was kind of probably like yours, Torrance, where I started, I had a big solid run and then boom, you know, it stopped. And I did not come back. So other than to like, you know, I guess die. But at the end of the time, you know, uh, that, that was mine. And I guess I agree with Torrance. I also in the beginning was talking to the writers and they were talking to me, asking me questions. And I was talking to them and they were, you know, modeling the character, so to speak, and exploring what they were going to do. This was in season one, too. And, you know, I, I think Nathaniel. I'm excited to hear what you have to say when I shut up in just a moment, but I'm excited to hear how you got to experience what they told you at the beginning and what happened with your stuff. Well, I wish what they had have done more is just more ways you can kill Cole. Cause I think I died like three times. <laughs> a or lot. Like I know, times. I know, I know. I'm like, we could have explored that more. Like, you know, I could have got hit by like two semi trailers going opposite, you know, opposite directions, but like tied to a chain or something. They could have been, you know, they could have shot me out to Mars with, you know, Elon Musk's new, you know, mission to the moon. And I never make it because they think, oh, well, he's a man, but he'll probably survive. But then, you know, turns out he can't survive in space. Like there just could have been alternate options to kill me. And I think, you know, Julie Pleck, uh, tried to think of every single way to kill me but i think she could have done more i think there could have been more ways i could have died and come back and died and come back yeah, did we ever explore vampires in space do we know what happens to them you know what davina could have kissed me to death that would have been a good death you know good just not a bad way to go <laughs> anyway, i like so- the cole you what were- was that you did witchcraft for a while. I liked that. I wish that would have been explored more. You were doing all sorts of cool, like ancient spells and stuff. And to I be like honest, I was just trying to make a good smoothie, but it looked like witchcraft, you know. Spoiler. <laughs> um, okay, guys, we have Justin on Facebook. What was your favorite part of New Orleans if you were able to film there? And if not, which set in Georgia did you think was the coolest? <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you guys go to New Orleans, either of you? I did no. not. Never, never seen it in time. my life. Actually, hey, this is funny because we were just talking about kind of our our runs, at least for you and me, Torrance. But like uh, after I was done, they they contacted me to shoot an insert of a scene where it was in New Orleans. They flew me to New Orleans and I literally all I had to do was walk outside of this warehouse. And it was going into the scene where me and Daniel Gillies, Elijah, we were fighting all the world all the werewolves that were all coming in all the wolves and we were like ripping arms off and shit it was a lot of fun 
And you shot that in New Orleans? No, we did not shoot the combat. All that was shot in Georgia. But the okay. one insert, literally, of the you know establishing shot of the warehouse and the New right. Orleans front, they needed me to walk in front of the building. Wow. So that's what I did. I just walked in front of the building. Could you have even... The wardrobe like, it had when I shot the whole stuff. Could you off. even tell it was New Orleans? Was it even worth it? Could have been anywhere. You know, I mean, they did see the Mississippi and all that pretty good, I guess. I mean... I wonder, it's either that or I guess what's green screen somehow. I don't really know. I think yeah. you, I, don't know, I think they needed that. If it they wanted to get a big wide shot, I guess they needed that. They needed the Mississippi yeah. River. Because in yeah, Georgia. It's, it's uh, amazing sometimes the, the money that goes into a single shot. You're like, they've paid to fly me out here, put me in a hotel, feed mm. me, a house yeah. me. And, and like, it was, it's cool. Money. I'm from Louisiana. And so I got to see my mom and my dad and they came to set, you know, I hung out a little bit. And then I got to hang out in New Orleans after that. So that was pretty, pretty. And then I went home for a little bit, which is I live in Monroe or used to live when I was young. So, yeah. Well, the Vampire Diaries universe fans, we're pretty, we, we keep track of all the things. So someone would have called out if you weren't walking in front of that warehouse. So. It would have been like, wait a second. I know where that warehouse <laughs> is. This. Yeah. I got to write this on my hand because I have no paper here. D, D Warner Brothers, imagine my disgust when. <laughs> Anyway, okay. Um, okay, we have, let's get to our next question. Uh, another one from Facebook. Vampires live forever. If you had the chance to become immortal without, wait, what, without being turned into a vampire, would you seize it or not? I'm taking out the without be, being turned into a vampire. Yeah, what is Mark Zuckerberg writing? Oh. I'm, oh. Yeah, Mark, sorry, we're taking that <clears throat> one. If you had the chance to become immortal, would you seize it? I think probably no. I don't know. Uh, there was an interesting exploration of this, uh, you know, admittedly a kind of a surface level exploration uh, in uh, The Good Place, where it's like, um, uh, what makes life worth living? Maybe it's that it has an end point. I think I might struggle with the purpose of endlessness. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what they explore a lot about in, you know, like vampire film, interview the vampire and stuff like that. And most vampire like films explore that idea. And that's also what I was thinking. I'm on the same page. It's tough. You're like, oh shit, like, wow. But at the same time, it's like, I agree with you. If you don't feel like there's a purpose anymore, it's also, in my opinion, you say I could become immortal, but that doesn't mean I can't die. You know, I, I won't die of old age. Maybe you're saying, but I, if I walk out and get hit by a truck, am I going to die? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you going to, am I going to live forever fearing that I might one day die? And if you live forever, know, you know, it's a weird you get hit by a truck, even like though today, you live forever maimed. Say that again? Oh, yeah. Never, <laughs> Say, like, like you know, if you get no horrible figuring accidents, so that just saying, do now. What happens if your head, like, gets severed from your body twice? Like, there's got to be an end here. You got to figure this out. You're not a vampire. You're only an immortal. I'll just say I can never finish an essay without a deadline. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's my metaphor. Yeah. I agree. Well, what about I agree. you? Um, if we looked at the current state of the world and the like trajectory that it's on, I probably wouldn't want to live forever. But um, as a Christian, I actually do believe that we were meant to live forever. Um, and the, the reality that we've kind of come into is death. Um, and that's why it's so uncomfortable to experience and to deal with, uh, whether it's, you know, understanding your own death, which is a difficult concept, or losing someone that you really, really love. <clears throat> so I think fundamentally um, we're actually – eternity is an actual reality that we have inside of us. But um, I think the reason why we probably are more willing to accept death is because this world is so broken and it's just painful and uncomfortable. And there's just so many horrible things that happen that you have to sort of deal with through life that you'd probably actually rather take the pill and, and like lose the pain and discomfort. But if the world was the way God originally designed it and everything was good and people were actually lovers of him and lovers of each other, I think there would be a nice reality to live forever because that's the whole point of it, you know? And when you fall in love with someone, I think that's the biggest key. When you fall in love with someone, um, anything short of forever isn't enough. If you really, really love someone, you know, think of your family or your partner or your kids. If someone said to you, there was an expiration date on that, you'd be like, it's not enough. No matter what number they gave you, if you really, really love something, it's not enough. So I think like eternity is actually like the key to that answer. If it's true love, that you would want to have it forever. So true. After having my kids too, I thought I couldn't love someone more than my husband. And then there's that different kind of love. And then it's like, I need them forever. Yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and the reality of not having that 
is mm-hmm. actually really, really sad and heartbreaking. So that's you're very dang, you're really that's very uh insightful. I, I'm glad you said that. And you're you made me think of something too, Nathaniel, to add kind of the, the side of it too. If you are immortal, you're the sole and only one, is that right? And nobody else is. So is everybody around you gonna die? You know, and it's like wow. That's what yeah. kind of brought into my mind. You know, it's well, like, yeah. If you're if you're the only one, that would be miserable and horrible. Yeah, totally. You know, it's like, and you're like, what is the purpose, really? <laughs> yeah. That would be very tough. I would feel. You know, it's like, wow. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. a movie. Yeah. Uh, sorry, hey, real quick. There's a movie. It's called The Man from Earth. Go check it out. It's kind of about. It's about a guy who is immortal. And he, it's a very normal film. It's about people that arrive in this house. And he's a teacher, all professors at this college, and he's a professor there, and they're all talking. And he basically tells them, I've been moving around for thousands of years because I'm immortal, and now I have to leave. It's it's pretty fascinating. Check it out. I don't know. That just made me just think about that. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, sorry. No, no apologies. This is good stuff. Um, well, that kind of, that you made me think of the new Marvel uh, franchise, The Eternals, that is was supposed to come out. Now it's being pushed over. Um, and that's kind of goes into one of our next questions here. Tyler on Facebook wants to know, um, so many of us nerd out over the Vampire Diaries universe. We love you guys so much. What is your favorite verse to nerd, to nerd out over? Marvel, Vampire Diaries, Doctor Who? Star Wars is mine. Star Wars. Yeah, long shot. Jedi, lightsabers, excuse me. <clears throat> Jedi, lightsabers, all of that. I'm a, I'm a huge nerd about that ever since I was a kid. Love, love, love. Awesome. Uh, Torrance, what about you? I, I think for me, it's the um, the Song of Ice and Fire universe. And, um, you know, the, the final season of Game of Thrones, uh, the final few seasons really were a little bit disappointing in the way that they they had to wrap everything up. And you could see it. And part of the joy of the world for me is how it's ever expanding. And actually, I, I almost, there's part of me that hopes that those books never get finished. And they, he just keeps writing more and more. And then it just ends as this big, dissatisfying unfinished world that's ever expanding because uh there's so much uh there's so much room for for geekery in it and fan theories and he's threaded so many little um clues throughout the text and so uh, there's a lot of really credible theories and then the, the show chose to uh, the show the show ended up being none of them so i don't know if there's actually a conclusion to the series that would be satisfying at this point more than all of the the ideas of what it could be but i, I like to I, I like to geek out on that one Awesome. Love it. What about you, Nathaniel? Oh, what was the question? What do I geek out to? Yeah, what do you geek out over? It doesn't have to be like a, a TV uh, or movie fandom, anything. To be honest with you, I geek out over the Bible. Um, so, in fact, what's holding my laptop above everything is uh, two huge commentaries on the New and Old Testament. So, yeah, that's what I spend my days doing. Um, so the actual thing is I actually fall asleep listening to podcasts explaining biblical theology. Mm-hmm. So... That's what I do. And, and I spend, I don't know, I spend hours a day. I love it. I think it's very, very interesting because, you know, um, often people will make a claim that, you know, the Bible is an ancient text and so unrelatable to today. But what I find fascinating about the Bible is how accurate it is about the human condition and uh, how we haven't changed. We're exactly the same as it describes us. Um, even though our environment around us may look a little bit different, we still operate in the exact same manner as we did thousands and thousands of years ago. And the issue remains the same. So it's kind of a, it's a fascinating look. And it just, I feel like it has given me so much more wisdom and understanding about um, the world, myself, um, how I engage with God, how I engage with people and how I engage with things, you know? So yeah, that's what I geek out on. I've just got like probably 50, 60 books in here that I'm still trying to work through and read. Um, did, you yeah, study, not, did you study religious studies or anything? At no, I, I became a Christian at 27, actually, when I first started working on Vampire Diaries, oddly enough. Um, uh, and it was just something that, uh, you know, someone presented Jesus in a different way than I'd ever heard before. And um I was interested. I was, you know, I, I kind of looked at the at my life at 27 and 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 pursuing acting was my goal. Um, it was like my life dream, um, you know, and it was something I always wanted to achieve. But I realized when I got there, it wasn't as fulfilling or satisfying as I would have hoped. And there was just another thing to sort of pursue. So when I sort of <clears throat> got first introduced to this idea of Jesus, it's very difficult to understand or identify really who he is, how you relate to him and, and, and who he says he is, because there's a lot of work behind that. But over like, you know, you know, seven years, because I've been a Christian for seven years now, I've sort of 
gotten a, a, a far better idea of understanding, you know, the God of the Bible, how he describes himself, uh, how he describes us and how we are sort of meant to relate to him. Um, and in, and especially in the context of this world and everything that's happening, I think it's the only thing that's helped me make sense of, you know, what we're looking at in the world today. Because the Bible is pretty accurate about like the direction that we're going as humanity. And it's not good. It's, it's not, it's not promising for humans, you know? So so it's it's been it's been really interesting studying that, and then that's kind of led me into a journey of understanding Judaism because Jesus was a Jew, and I think the one struggle for a lot of Christians is they think that Jesus came to start a new religion, which he didn't. He came to confirm everything that he had promised, you know, the Jewish nation. So you kind of really have to start going back into the Jewish text and understanding the history and the culture, and um, yeah, it's just kind of it's like a a very very very, very deep deep rabbit hole that you just keep going down, but then you realize you just can't exhaust the depths of God. You just, you can just keep going and going, going, you know? So yeah, that's why probably you end up, you meet people who discover it and they really, really geek out because they realize you just, there's just so much, you know, it's like that thing you were talking about with Game of Thrones. It's never ending. Well, the yeah, I agree with you. I'm also very fascinated with the Bible. Mm. I grew up quite very religious. I grew up within the church, within the Episcopalian church. Yeah. I was burned. I was an acolyte. I did everything. I grew up in mm. the choir I helped assist the organist. You know, I did all kinds of stuff growing up. And I actually went to a private Episcopalian junior high elementary school and then a private Catholic high school. Yeah. When I finally graduated, I went to a normal public university. And I experienced many things growing up in that world that made me who I am now. And one of the many things that I still love is that exact thing you're describing, how deep it goes and how meaningful mm. all of it is. Because there's a lot to learn from it. I completely agree with you. There's a lot to learn from those texts and I'm really, yeah. I really admire how much you have dedicated to really analyzing them because I know you've been doing that a really long time. I think as long yeah. as I've known you, as long as I've known yeah, you, basically, that's been a yeah. few years, you know. Oh, and I still, I, know you. I still haven't even scratched the surface, to be honest. So yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. That's my geek out. It's oh, interesting ahead. when I meet people because they think, oh, it's just on his social media. Maybe he just likes to share God on his social media, but they meet me in person and I just start talking about God. They're like, oh, it's real. He doesn't stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. I'm like, it doesn't stop. Well, to bring it full circle with, I know um, I'm a big uh, song of World of Ice and Fire fan as well, uh, Torrance. And I, it was so interesting to see that George R. R. Martin I think why we find it so interesting is so much of that history is influenced from our own history. Like he, you know, took certain wars in human history and that influenced, you know, yeah. whatever he wrote about with uh, a certain book. So yeah, it all, it all makes it very interesting, interesting to study, fulfilling. Okay. Let's get some more questions. We are at the 30 minute mark. So I think we can, we can crank out a few more of these questions here and don't forget guys, you can get your, um, your private video chats and autographs, those are on sale all week. And that will be taking place on January 9th at 1 p.m. Pacific. Okay, um, it seems, this is from uh, Sarah on Facebook. It seems like you guys are all really good friends, everyone in the Vampire Diaries universe. Who do you still talk to today? This one is uh, for each of you. Yeah, I still talk to um, Claire and Daniel probably the most. Um, I sort of keep in touch with those guys. Um, I spoke to Charles the other day. Um, but like, you know, I guess it's one of those things like if, you know, even though we don't sort of keep in touch with everybody, I'm sure if we saw them in the street or we were, you know, at an event or something like that, we would immediately just sort of rekindle that friendship that we had because we were so, so close together for so many years. Um, so it is, it's a really beautiful thing. And I think it's just one of those advantages of working as an actor and being on a set, you're, you're close and, um, in close proximity with all these people all the time and it, it becomes very social. So it does become like a little family. That's awesome. Chase. Or yeah. Yeah, man, I agree. Uh, you know, it's, I think Micah, he and I, even though we actually did not even work together on the same show, we were united via the conventions, you know? And so, we became such close, good friends that way. And he would be the one that I probably keep in touch with the absolute most, but an extension of that, Chris Brochu is one as well. He was on vampire that as you guys know, but again, uh, that's another, again, I met through the conventions and that's one great thing about the conventions is that, you know, uh, in even situations like this, like, you know, Torrance, you and I did not work together at the same time. We never would have met unless it was for these, you know what I mean? So it's so great about these. Thanks to wizard world, by the way, for making this happen. Right guys. So, you know, and, and Nathaniel, 
I think Nathaniel, I don't know if you remember, I met you in Atlanta when I was just starting. I think you were sweet. You were filming the pilot of that spinoff of Supernatural. That's what uh, you were doing. That's what you were yeah. doing. You were in the weight room. It was just you and me. Surprised you don't remember. It's like long, long hair. I came up yeah. to you. Yo, what's up, man? Blah, blah, blah. I'm watching the Vampire Diaries. I just saw I didn't, you. I thought, we met at the, I thought we met at the Kingdom audition. We've met, dude, we met a few times. <laughs> oh, sorry, you don't even Brian. remember me. Oh. Not easy to forget. Sorry, guys. Not easy, sorry. Not easy to forget. <laughs> I was in character, man. When I go to auditions, I'm in character. I you know? guess is what really kind of solidified. Yeah, he's we got to really hang out more. It wasn't yeah. just in it was so a it was a auditions. We met at that one audition too. It was about the UFC fighters. Yeah, that was success. Kingdom. That was, that was what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. My bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't get that job. <sighs> no, that was, that was like, how long ago was that? Shit. That was a long time ago. That was a callback, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I did good little family. I, I don't think I, I, I ever met Torrance. We, I don't think we ever interacted besides actually Wizard World. I think right, right? Or I, I met I, you as well I, at an audition. I, I will corroborate that. I, I, I don't. I wish I had some story to bust out for you where I like I met you and you don't remember me, but no. <laughs> like, look, you're just you're not very, you're not a very memorable guy. That's all. I, I, I've David done that. It's okay. No, sometimes it's just. So you don't feel, I don't really feel offended. I don't know. Just, do, do you ever do that to people knowing you're about to do that to somebody? Like yeah. I remember one time, like I was about to, I was about to, I was presenting at a, at an awards show in Canada at the, like the much music video awards. And, and I was presenting with Joe Jonas who was hosting the thing. And I had met Joe Jonas like 10 years earlier for about five minutes, like outside my old apartment. So he was like with some, another friend of mine. And I was like, Hey man, good to see you. <laughs> and I, I knew I was totally ambushing him with that, but he, he had a good sense of humor about it. And yeah. uh, he's a really nice guy, but uh, uh, I, I explained to him then why I did that. And, you know, it, it was funny to me. You should do it every, I, I like to do it every time to people now. I'm yeah. just going to start doing like, nice to meet you. Even like, I'll, I'll say it to my mom this morning. Like, hey, nice to meet you. Are you new here? <laughs> Oh, so you, right, you're, gonna... you're approaching it from the other side. You pretend you don't know any, anybody and I pretend I already know everybody. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Oh, oh, and guys, that question was from um, Ava and today's her birthday. Could we tell her happy birthday? Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Ava. I hope this is the best day of your life. You just made it. Probably, it probably is because I just said happy birthday to you and I don't know who you are. I've never met you before. Hey, but don't worry. He won't remember Ava? you. Have he you. Exactly you. He won't you remember know. you either. Ten, don't worry. He won't remember. Ten hours from now, Ava, I'm going to remember you because I'm like, oh, that's yeah. right. I wished a stranger a happy birthday today, and her name was we Ava. To, we went to school I'm never going to forget five you. Five years. How do you not remember me? Who, Ava? Yeah, Ava. Ava we dated we, for we look. We dated for a little while. She just yeah. got too serious too quick. I had to go look Ava. Again and again. Stop. How old is Ava? By the way. How old is she? I don't know, but I just said she's loving this. Like, oh, is she? This is making her birthday right now. Right now, she's she's screen recording this. You can tell. Ava, stop. Stop, Ava. You have not been given permission. Ava, 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 I was at your birthday last year. <laughs> Ava, I don't know who you are. How do we know it's her birthday? Can we get proof? Let's she get said, a driver's license. I mean, she just said, OMG, you just made my day. Ask her for credit card details. That's the only <laughs> way we can confirm it's her birthday. We, we need the CC uh, V number also. Don't, Ava, don't do that. Don't do it. Someone That's fine, Ava. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> Trust me. I'm going to get you a birthday present with your credit card. Trust me. You're going to love it. It's from Palm Sundays. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Motions. Okay. Well, <clears throat> well, we'll get this next question to Ava then too. Um, and it'll probably have to be one of our last ones. Okay, guys, um, where do you each see yourself in, oh, five, 10, and 20 years? Let's just, let's go in the middle. In 10 years, what, or what are your goals and aspirations? Pandemic aside, let's say the virus is here. 2031, there. 2031, what is going on? Yeah, what's going on for you guys? I'm definitely going to be in a car that flies. Okay. Well, because, you know, isn't that what, back to the future? We should have already been in flying cars by now. Hmm. We should. True. We failed. failed. What's what's the question? Where do you where do you see yourself in ten years, and or what are your goals and aspirations? Oh well, mm. I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know where I see myself in ten minutes. Um, I tell you where you're going to be. You're going to be on Twitch as soon. No, it's, is it Twitch or Switch? 
Wait, we are, well, both actually. I'll be play my switch on Twitch. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's what you're going to be doing in ten minutes. I guarantee you. Uh, it's, you're, you may not be wrong. <laughs> I can predict the future. There you go. There you go. Um, in ten years' time, I'm going to look exactly the same. Just letting you know. Um, and I will probably, hopefully, uh, not still be living with my mum because right now I'm living with my mom and it's awesome. I love it. I love living with my mom, but I'm 37 and in 10 years time, I'm going to be 47. And that's going to, I'll probably end up start getting cats like chase. If I still stay with my mom. <laughs> you might become a cat lady. You know, I think in 10 years, I might actually de-age a tad and look even a little younger and better than I do now. Um, and I'm probably, what's your secret know. Botox fillers? What are you doing? All of it, man. I just go crazy. Uh, <laughs> I say yes. That's the, that's the key is just say yes, you know? I don't know. I hope at least in 2031 I've um, um, been able to grow enough as a man and as a human being to feel, you know, like I've done enough in that last 10 years to feel like, you know, I don't know, that I've earned that time, I guess. I think back the last 10 years and I'm like, huh, what did you do the last 10 years? You know, and it's, it's a lot, a decade's a lot, but at the same time it isn't, you know, it's like, I had almost just moved to LA at that point. You know, it's like, I think I moved to LA a little, a little over eight years ago, actually. But uh, so, you know, I'm just thinking about it in that capacity. And then, wow, have I grown from that time? And I can't even imagine in 2031. I just hope that it's in a good, positive, optimistic, you know, and, and ethical, gen you know, generous direction, if that makes any sense. You know it what does. I mean? Yeah. It does. Yeah. I also, one more thing I want to do in 10 years time. I want to wish Evie a happy birthday because she'll be Ava. 10 years Ava. old. Ava, Ava, oh, who cares? The point is, I You did that on purpose. You totally <laughs> set that up. You set that up. I know you did that on purpose. Ava said, he said, I'm 18 and literally crying. So she'll be 28 in 10 years. 28. So you made her cry. In a good way. It's a good, You're it's good. good. 28. You're going to be 28, yeah. Ava. You got a lot to, you got a lot to achieve. Remember her name. Huh? You said you made her cry because you can't remember her name. But that's okay. She made me cry because she doesn't remember me from her last She never birthday. met you. She didn't meet you. You weren't at her birthday. I was there. You know, no one remembers. In fact, you know, yeah. Let's just let it go. We still let love you, Ava. This is this panel is just for you. And we wish you the best birthday ever. And uh to to round it out, um, I I know that we're all kind of working on different stuff. The pandemic's like shut things down and it's been a little weird, but if there's anything that you want to share where people can find, um, I know that uh, Chase, you talked about um, some of your new music. Of course, we hope to see you guys at actual conventions year. I don't even want to put a time on it. Who knows when, when that'll happen, but do you guys want to do a round Robin and share anything that um, where folks can find you? What's next? I'll just throw in real quick. Sorry, Sage, you just brought it up real quick. I'll just throw in. Yeah. Um, all pretty much all my social media is the same. It's at Chase R. Coleman. So follow me somewhere, wherever you follow your stuff and you like to go Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, go there and you'll see and find where I'll be posting and keeping in touch and just keep in touch with me. There's a lot happening. Lots of new music. Yeah. Just released my music video like last week, I guess. Please go check it out. Please. Excited. Awesome. Yeah, I've, I've been doing, um, I, I, I've been, I've taken up a Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Torrance Coombs. And I'm, uh, I don't have a set schedule yet, but I'm streaming uh, at least every other day at the moment. Um, so come on by, say hi, check it out. And uh, it's a little variety stream. We play a, a bunch of different games and, uh, and just hang out. Awesome. Nathaniel? Yeah. Um, well, I have a, an account called at Palm Sundays Co. Um, which is my clothing brand. Um, and that's also a place where I'm going to start building and just sort of <clears throat> sharing some more biblical truth. So people, if they're interested in learning more about the Bible or they're interested in discovering what that is, um, you know, and um, I'm going to probably spend a little bit more time doing live videos. And I'm also hopefully going to start teaching through the gospel of Luke completely. I've been a little bit slack lately, but I'm getting back on that. I want people to sort of get it from a different perspective than they may never have got before. You know, if you learn it from a you know high school or you went to a Catholic school or something, you may have a very um, uh, misconception of what you know Christianity is. So yeah, that's probably the best place you can find me on, um, and also my socials. But yeah, or you can just see me on the street, come up to me, and I'll say I don't know you and I've never met you. But you know, <laughs> either or, you choose. Deal's choice. See in his eyes only that he's lying. 
Yeah, you'll see. Yeah, you can just tell by my eyes. You know, my beautiful eyes, beautiful brown eyes. You can't. Not many people have brown eyes anymore. You know, most people have like greeny, boring eyes. You know, like they're ocean blue, like you know, Torrance or something like that. You know, it's really hard to come by brown eyes now. <laughs> As a fellow brown-eyed person, I, I, I mean, I'm partial. You have amazing brown eyes. Thank you. Takes one. Yeah. But my daughter. Chase, what do you got? You got like blue like- eyes. They're actually hazel. They're, hazel, they're boring, blue. boring. It's you need like dark, blue. dark, dark brown eyes, like almost black, like that. They just you can't, you can't, you can't see inside my soul. They're protected. You know who has eyes like you is Ava, and that's why. She? How do you know? How do you know? Were you at a birthday? I just know. I was. I was there with Torrance last year. Torrance, you're Torrance. That's right. Yeah. See, you remember me. I do. Yeah. Well, if you Ava knew, if you knew Ava as well as I did, you you know that she likes to be called Eva. You'd know that. Well, no. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, thank so you nickname. so much. This Ava's is nickname amazing. is Eva. That's her nickname. What a, what a great day to kick off the new year. Personally, for me, I'm a huge fan. This was awesome. I got to have my husband watch the girls for an hour. So thank you so much Thanks, for Liz. that. Um, and everyone, uh, don't forget to check out those live one-on-one video chats and photo ops available all week at wizardworldvirtual.com. And let's give another big round of applause, heart, thumbs up emojis to Chase, Nathaniel, and Torrance. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Much love. Hope you everyone's guys. well. Have a good day. And uh, we will see some of you soon in the uh, private videos and chats. Yeah. Um, what he said. Thanks, guys. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.